Hello, and welcome to Shaking and Sipping. This is the show where we shake up a cocktail or other mixed drink, have a sip, talk a bit about its history and variants, and see how it is. We're continuing our quest to work through the IBA's list of official cocktails. We're in the unforgettable section, and this week's unforgettable is the sidecar. Now this is, I think, definitely an unforgettable cocktail. This is one of those that I think of when I think of classic cocktails. It's never been my personal go-to, but it's one of those that first comes to mind alongside something like an old-fashioned martini, a Manhattan, a sidecar. It's right in there for me. Now, this one's pretty simple. We're not going to go crazy with variants here, and the history's fairly clear as well, so shouldn't be too complicated, but let's get right into it. So the sidecar is often credited to front of the show Harry Macalone, who of course ran Harry's New York Bar in Paris for a long time and was very influential, been mentioned before, and it's been credited to him by such people as himself in one of his later books. However, he didn't create it, probably. Um, rather, before he was at Harry's New York Bar, he was in, I believe, London at um, the Bucks Club, I think it's called, in about 1919. And with him there was another bartender called Pat McGarry, uh, whose real first name was Malachi, which is fun. And it appears that it's he who created the drink. In Harry McAlone's first edition, um, 1922, he credits it to Pat. There's also an earlier recipe write-up by someone else, I don't recall whom, um, before Harry's book comes out with the recipe in there. So it's likely that he was working alongside uh, Pat when he created the drink. But still, that's pretty locked in. 1919, I believe, June is when the club opened and he was working there with him, so early in the year 1919 he may have been involved in the drink, but it is likely Pat who actually created it. Now what is the drink? It's really kind of similar to a Brandy Cresta, which we covered many weeks ago, which was one of the very first drinks to be sort of a big citrus alcohol mixture and that of course had some maraschino and a little bit of bitters in addition to the uh, citrus element but otherwise it's just a rehash on that it's going to be cognac it's going to be some sort of an orange liqueur which we'll talk about a little bit further and then it's going to be lemon juice and that is all there is so we're going to go this week and go in chronological order we're going to start with the earliest recipes then we'll make the IBA spec and then we'll make a slight tweak to it to make it more like how I'd prefer it. Uh, with that, let's make our first one. Alright, so the earliest versions of the sidecar, while there's a few differences in proportion between recipes, um, mostly until the 1930 uh, Craddock write-up, have it as an equal parts drink. So that's what we're going to start out with. So I'm going to grab a lemon. I'm going to take one ounce or 30 milliliters of that. And I'm going to take one ounce or 30 milliliters of Cointreau. Um, the recipe, some of the early recipes specifically call for Cointreau. Um, some other, wow, this is stuck. And uh, some recipes will just say triple sec. Cointreau is basically the original of the things known as triple secs. I think it's a hair dry for this drink, which we'll talk about later because we are um, losing some of the other sweetness elements like the maraschino from the crusta. And so I'm not convinced that Cointreau brings enough sweetness back into this since it is acting as the sole sweetener, but we will play with it in a moment. And then finally, we need an ounce or 30 milliliters of a cognac. We're using Pierre Ferrand 1840 as always. Grab some ice and shake it up. Here we go. And we're going to strain that into a preferably chilled Nick and Nora or coupe or small cocktail glass. I'm going to switch around and go to a coupe, I think, for the others, but 
I like this in a Nick and Laura Fields classic. As far as garnish, um, sources differ a little bit. There are some sources, especially early on, who like the sugared rim or the half sugared rim, which again I think may be a holdover from the Brandy Cristo, which had that elaborate peel garnish that I botched. Um, some people still like it with that today. I am not a big fan of fancy rim stuff, whether that's sugar or salt or whatever else. So we're gonna leave it as is. I think you could put a twist on this if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. So this is a very early, sort of 1920-ish sidecar. Yeah, so it's a good drink. Um, it's interesting, the amount of lemon in there is enough to really kind of take over this drink. I think that, um, Cointreau actually is sweet enough when it's mixed with this amount of lemon relative to the cognac. Yeah, it's nice. I just, I don't get that much cognac here. It's citrus forward, um, very lemon. It's a little bit tart. Then that citrus opens up a little bit. I get a little bit of the orange of the Cointreau. And then there's sort of like, oh, there's a little bit of barrel or something that hits very back of palate, very late. Um, yeah, it's there in sort of the aftertaste. Otherwise it doesn't really show up. It's just a slightly deeper lemonade um, that's not very sweet. Really good. Um, quite a bit different from what I think of as a sidecar though. All right, so as I mentioned by the 1930 edition of the Savoy Cocktail Book from um, Harry Craddock, the drink was changed to a two to one to one. So two parts cognac, one of the other two. That's bounced around a bit over the years. David Embry had a lot of thoughts about it in his book. Um, various people have said various things, but um, the IBA has settled on a five to two to two ratio just to be difficult, I suppose. So what we want is 20 milliliters, that's about two-thirds of an ounce of our lemon. The same 20 milliliters, or two-thirds of an ounce, of our Cointreau. I think IBA's recipe actually says triple sec, but this is what they mean. Quantro loves talking about sidecars. I wonder if it even says it on the back. No, it doesn't, but if you go to their website or something, it's full of sidecars. And then 50 milliliters of our Pierre Franc 1840 cognac. So that's one and two thirds ounces. Oh my, we have run out of cognac. Nobody panic. We're gonna get through this. I have more cognac. We're gonna strain that into an ideally chilled coupe. And again, no garnish needed. And this is the IBA spec sidecar. Yeah, so that now we actually are getting cognac right from the beginning. So this is now doing that weird dark citrus thing. I don't remember what episode I talked about that in before. It could have been the Brandy Cresta. That um, reminds me almost of uh, some old Gatorade flavor that doesn't exist anymore that has a really strange sort of orange flavor, but it's not orange. It's orange that's twisted. Um, and so I don't know what that is in the cognac, but some of the sort of spice notes, the age notes, blend in with the orange and the lemon to really create something that's really deep and um, 
not that bright. So I'm still getting the tart of lemon at the beginning, but then all the orange, some of the lemon, and the cognac are all really working together to create the whole rest of the drink in a way. Um, I don't know, I like it. It's not my favorite drink in the world. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it can be better though. So for the final version, we're gonna make just a couple changes um, to put this a little bit more to my liking. I want this to be spirit forward. Um, I really want to experience the cognac and have the other ingredients serving to enhance my experience of the cognac um, rather than completely go into a sort of weird citrus place. And so to that end, we're going to change up a few things. Firstly, proportions. Um, so we are going to cut that lemon back to half an ounce or 30, or, sorry, or 15 milliliters. And we're gonna switch from Cointreau to Curacao, um, also Pierre Ferrand, um, which is a little bit sweeter than Cointreau and a little bit less sort of forceful at the same time. I think it's gonna work really well here. Mm, it smells so good. It smells almost a little bit brown sugary. Um, it's made with cognac, so it kind of plays really well here. Um, and this we are going to take up to that 20 milliliters, just like the IBA spec, so about two-thirds of an ounce. And then for our cognac, we're going to do a full two-ounce pour, so 60 milliliters. Strain that into an ideally chilled coupe. And this one I am going to do a lemon twist with, um, and my peeler is MIA, so let's do it old school. And then discard. All right, and this is a more updated spec for my liking of a sidecar. Yeah, so that is almost perfect. I'll tell you more about it in a moment, but I actually think it needs just a hair of simple. And I mean just a hair. I'm going for like half a bar spoon, if that. Yep, that's plenty. Just to open up the cognac a little more. I'm not trying to make it sweet, just trying to open up the cognac. Yeah, so that's delicious. So now what I get is right on the tongue, I get a hair of sweetness that is the simple, but it's also the curacao. And then I get the citrus second. And so there's this bright note that shows up on the middle of the palate, which then opens into what's clearly cognac. It's not any more sort of a cognac influenced citrus, it's cognac that has this bright lemon note just poking over the top of it. Yeah, and just a little bit of orange hanging out there. There's a nice sort of aftertaste of cognac. This to me is, is just better. It's more cognac focused. It's not trying to be punchy. It's, it's really a, sort of a variant on like a cognac sour or something. So before I do my wrap up, I realized I didn't cover two important things. One, can you make a sidecar with other liquors and why didn't I do so? Um, you can. There are people who make gin sidecars and rum sidecars and things. I'm not a huge fan of that school. I feel like this drink is a fairly specific cognac or brandy drink. Um, I feel like switching the base spirit um, 
It just feels more like I'm trying to make a riff on a different cocktail at that point. To me, the sidecar is a brand new drink. Second, where from that name sidecar? Um, it's not entirely clear. The most coherent explanations I've seen is that it's literally named for a sidecar on a motorcycle due to either their sudden popularity generally or perhaps because they were used a lot on military motorcycles in the Great War, something like that. I have seen a few other proposals. I believe it was uh, Dale DeGroff who suggests that um, whatever was left in the shaker you'd put into a shot glass and serve like with it or to someone else at the bar and that it was the sidecar with the drink. I didn't read his whole article on that. He's a very informed, intelligent guy, so there's probably a good thinking point behind that. I, it didn't make a ton of sense to me though, so I think this is just named after a sidecar. All right, well, thanks so much for coming along this week as we looked a little bit at the sidecar, one of the true classic cocktails. You can check the blog at shakingandsipping.com. We'll have a write-up on this and every other drink, as well as most weeks, the day after this goes up, we'll have an IBA in real life where we write up what happens when we go to a local Seattle cocktail bar and order this, if they make it often, if they have variants on it, etc. You can follow on Twitter at shaking underscore sipping. That's where you'll see updates on when we're doing those IBA in real life, as well as any other sort of Twitter updates. If you could do all of the YouTube things, I'd appreciate it. Comment, share, like, subscribe, watch all the other videos on the channel on a loop. Thank you. Um, and we'll be back next week with the next drink on the IBA's list of official cocktails. Until then, happy sipping. Cheers.